I, ha I haven't seen anybody yet, but I haven't gotten through the whole list. Okay, yeah, I was trying to memorize like all the new people that have joined um, just uh, the last couple days. And so if I saw their name, I was trying to say hi to them, but you say hi to them if you say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, it is hot and muggy here. Yeah, I have closed up. I'm in the basement. So that's why I have a shirt on instead of a tank top upstairs. All right, so the agenda for the meeting tonight. Um, hi, my name is Sarah Flynn. I'm the president for uh, Portland Modern Quilt Guild, the volunteer president on the board for 2022. Um, I'm the host this evening. Uh, I am talking to you from Portland, Oregon. Here are some things we're gonna be doing. We're gonna go over um, upcoming happenings and then our guest speaker, uh, Giuseppe, Giuseppe Roboto has an amazing talk for us and we're really excited. It's gonna be in two parts. So he's gonna take questions after the first part and questions after the second part. So if you have a question, just jot it down and we'll make sure that we get it and post it in the chat. Um, then we have a business member highlight. We're really excited to be highlighting a business member, Beach Girl Quilting tonight. And then after that, we have some more fun guild business and like a really hot show and tell. So I'm pretty excited about the show and tell tonight. I was putting the slides together and I was like, oh my gosh, this is good. All right, next slide. Oh, downtown Seattle. Hi, Myra. Myra's new. Hi, Myra. Okay, upcoming happenings. Let's see. Me. Okay, here we go. Uh, call for 2023 board members is happening now. There is um, a spot to sign up for that in um, the members only section. It's a form um, because we are entering our third year of the pandemic. Um, not everybody knows each other. So we're asking for a picture of your face and a little bio and things like this so that we can uh, post um, all the information that you would like to share with uh, guild members about voting um, when it comes to voting for um, volunteers for next year's board. So uh, please include a picture and a bio and fill out the form. Um, I'm going to be talking at the end of the meeting a little bit more details about uh, volunteers and openings uh, for next year's board. So if you're interested, stick around and um, I hope to talk to you about that. Next on it, it was, as we see, we have QuiltCon Community Quilt Kits. Um, you can see in the picture there, that is Casey Manley. Um, again, that's something that came out of the new member mix. So the new members asked that we start adding pictures more to people's uh, things because they want to know faces as we haven't all met each other. Casey Manley has them at her house. She's putting the kits together. Um, I'm going to be picking up some tomorrow. So they'll be available. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi, uh, Casey Manley. Hi, Casey Manley. Okay. And um, so there's a form to fill out in the members only section. Uh, for picking up a quilt con outreach kit. Casey Manley's put them together. So you pick up a little kit of fabric and then you make the block and then you get the block back to Casey. Next on is West Side Sew Day with Carol Subert. I am so excited about this. Carol Subert is so amazing and fun to hang out with. And she is the first like volunteer official so day volunteer to to offer to do a so day besides um just board members putting together since the pandemic started and she lives on the west side so she's asked it be it happens at the west side uh we've worked with um the mill and fabric store to get a spot a location so there is a so day in september september 24th from 10 to 4 p.m there's no free table there that day um it's just a so day and there's going to be another so day um with Carol Suber in November, and that's on the website on the Guild calendar. So really excited about that. If you wanna go and hang out with people, I guarantee you're gonna learn something about sewing or quilting. It just happens. It's a really fun day. Um, Let's see, the next thing is Indigo Dye Workshop with Marcy McFarlane. She has a uh, workshop space, um, I believe North Star, it's off like 72nd and Gleason, which she shares with other artisans. And um, they are offering an indigo dye workshop. We're gonna have signups for that soon coming in the shop items. So look for that. Um, it's being offered by the small groups. So we're um, using our small groups budget to um, buy kits and things. So we hope people will come up for that and have a fun 
in-person day of indigo dyeing. We're going to have the big doors open. It's going to be open air. It's going to be really fun. More information about that coming up in the members only section and in our shop item and in the newsletter. So look for that indigo dye workshop. And Marcy did an amazing job of pulling fabrics to dye for the indigo dye workshop from the free table. So like those low loft uh, prints and things that are vintage prints are really fun to dye with um, indigo because the you can't really see the print but when you dye it the print really pops so we're excited about that all right, uh, Fall or Treat Camp Tillicum, that is coming up September 15th to the 18th. Um, it's full up right now, but the wait list is moving. So if you don't have tickets and you want to go, um, I recommend getting on the wait list. We just had a wait list spot open up today. Uh, and Angie Reet and Jenny McKee are leading that. Uh, they um, are sent out emails and they held a Zoom meeting last night. Um, that Zoom meeting recording is available now in the members only section if you missed it. Um, just with some information about the pillow swap and stuff like that, um, feel free to send a message to the Guild Inbox or to Jenny McKean, Angie Reet, and we will get it to them if you just send it to the Guild Inbox. Next on the list. All right, sad news, guys. The library is closing. I know, I know. Um, Angel Van Note is amazing, and she was our treasurer for two years. Um, she did an amazing job of taking over the library, and she has given it an honest college try. But after six months, she is recommending that um, the Guild uh, Library be dissolved because it's not being utilized. We have only had one person check out a book in the last six months. Um, so we are dissolving the library. Um, there, It's not all ironed out what's happening with all the books. We're probably looking at selling them during the fabric fundraiser or um, slowly selling them to um, guild members or things like this. When we know all the plans for it, we will definitely share it with you. So if you're looking on the members only site for a book, um, it's not there because uh, we're closing the library. All right, Charity Sew Day is taking the month off for this month. Uh, I think this the classroom at Modern Domestic is, um, Oh, wait, Chris, who's Chris, um, open call for volunteers. What's your question? Can you unmute mute and ask your question, Chris? Well, I'm just asking um, whether or not we could find another volunteer because I have a feeling that once we're in person a bit more, the library might become more popular. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I just, Angel Van Note is so smart and she recommended that we close it. So I think we're going with that, but then, you're so smart too. Do you want to just, just an idea? Give it another month and like and and ask for a volunteer. Will you send an email to the in guild inbox? So I don't I don't forget that you said this, even though I'm going to write it down. Okay, sure. And Thanks. then maybe because because at this point, Chris, listen, we had a meeting, a board meeting last weekend, and we're not planning on getting rid of any books at all. Where we're like, well, maybe we'll just defer that to next year's board. Mm -hmm. to figure out how to dissolve that okay. because we and we're, there were no rush is what I'm trying okay. to say okay just, angel's so smart she was treasured for two years so whatever she says I wanted to you know but a no, another um yeah yeah well okay anyways, yeah I'm I'll, I'll email you thank you thank you mm -hmm. yeah and it just we, yeah I mean like other guilds are closing the library or something like that but um there's tools and things it's a really great resource um yeah so that's that's happening. We would love a volunteer. Um, really great idea. Where do we find meeting recordings? Oh, meeting recordings for guild meetings are on our YouTube channel, and the meeting recording for their treat last night is uh, is only by the link because there was some private stuff. So that is in the members only section. This is great. Huh? Asking answering questions. This is really great. Okay. Um, uh, next slide, please. August raffle. We've got a whole bunch of juicy juice fabric. We're really excited about that. That Marcy's been holding until this meeting, but waiting to give it away. And then this beautiful notebook. Um, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair that was donated. A mustache eraser, a really cool seam ripper, which I love those seam rippers with the little nubbies on it because it almost like erases my mistakes because it pulls the threads out. It's my favorite. Um, we're going to do the winner by random drawing at the end. And if you're in Canada, Nadia has a bunch of stuff 
stuff in Canada in case a Canadian winner wins and we don't have to ship it. So the prizes may vary in Canada. So if you want to win some fun Juicy Juice fabric, stay tuned. Okay, next slide. Search for a meeting space. Uh, the members voted for once a quarter in 2023 as we segue back into a meeting space. Voting for the meeting space is open now. There's a link for it in the members only section. We sent a newsletter out um, uh, in the newsletter information for it. Um, if you have any questions about uh, any of the options, absolutely send an email to the Guild inbox and we'll work to um, we will work to respond to those questions as soon as possible. Um, if you want to just chat about meeting space stuff, that would be great too. Maybe think about sticking around uh, this evening. We have don't have a very full uh, agenda, so we'll have time at the end just to talk about things if you want. We will be having a town hall meeting in October, um, so that will be another option to talk about things. Um, so there's that. Yeah, vote for a meeting space. Encourage your friends to vote for a meeting space. Um, if you have any questions, absolutely ask them. Okay. I, wanted, I wanted to say quickly before you move on, um, we yeah. missed putting on the um, on the voting pet thing that St. Andrews does have Wi-Fi. No, I changed it. I fixed it. Oh, you, you fixed that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I fixed who it. Have, uh, the, who have already voted, I guess, um, didn't see that, but just in case you missed it, there is. Yeah, there's definitely Wi-Fi wi there. there. And I almost like, it's just one of those things is like, everybody's got Wi-Fi. But um, I was really appreciative that somebody sent an email and said, hey, you didn't post that there was Wi-Fi out there and there is Wi-Fi. And so I adjusted this, the um, the voting form for that. So there's definitely Wi-Fi at, at the St. Andrew's Catholic Church. Anything else? No? Okay, next slide. All right, I think I'm done talking and it is Marika's turn. There we go. Um, tonight we've got Giuseppe Rivaldo, known as Juicy Juice. Um, Giuseppe learned to sew from his grandmother at a young age. And in 2008, he began quilting and has never looked back. Not only a pattern designer, quilt instructor, and fabric designer, he's also the multimedia manager at Andover Fabrics. Giuseppe is an avid modern traditionalist quilter with a great passion for simple design in bright colors. Giuseppe's newest pattern release with Allison Glass is mini series season three. There will be a sew along for these patterns starting September 1st. Welcome, Giuseppe. Hi, everybody. How you doing? I am I'm excited to be here. Hang on one second. I want to change my view. Uh, let's see. There we go. That's better. How y'all doing? Um, I am really excited to be here. I'm coming at you from, as, as I'm sure many of you would call it, the other Portland. I'm in Portland, Maine, um, even though we were the first one, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, um, I, I moved, I, um, Marika, I should have sent you a more up-to-date um, bio. I actually don't, I'm not the multimedia manager at Andover anymore. I just do just, just full-time now. So I, um, we moved up here. That's uh, to so Maine awesome that you yeah, can make it a full-time job. Yeah. Love it's it. great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not complaining about it. They didn't fire me or anything. I just decided not to work, work there full time anymore. Um, hey, that was awesome. A lot of stuff. I wrote down notes. Did anybody else take notes? I took notes. Yeah, <laughs> I did. It was very well timed because I'm going to photograph a bunch of quilts this weekend. So now We've been I have talking about it. We've been talking about it. That, and like carpet tape. Tammy told me about carpet, carpet tape, tape a yeah. while ago and I spaced it out and I'm so I wrote it down because her husband has carpet and so he has lots of scraps of carpet tape that's what that's where that discussion went and i've also yeah. seen other people take carpet tape and like just put their scraps on it and make awesome scrappy like carpet tape things oh. cool do you want to share the slideshow yep thanks all right, our guest speaker, Giuseppe Rivato. That was awesome. Um, our uh, class on Sunday is sold out. Um, I believe he's asked people that are taking the class to send in a picture. I think just about everybody has the picture that of the quilt they're going to be working on to redesign. Um, just in case they haven't, you haven't sent a picture in, um, send it in because uh, uh, he's excited to help you work on them. And um, I'm really, really excited. Allison was talking about it before. I'm really excited to see um, some before and after pictures after that class. So um, 
I don't know, maybe we should do like a special show and tell like next month, or at least if we don't like, at least put them in for show and tell, cause I do want to see them. And we've set up our show and tell now so that you can submit more than one, uh, picture file. So feel free to do a before and after, um, we'd love to see it. All right. Next slide. Allison, did you want to talk about this class? Uh, yeah, so next month we have Sherry Zafaldi Morrill of uh, Whole Circle Studio. She is going to be uh, sharing all of her tips and tricks for walking foot quilting. She's also going to um, give some feedback on quilt design so everyone can submit a top that they're working on and she'll help you choose how to quilt it. So some uh, a special attempt to get some expert advice. We have just six spots left for that one. It's available on the website if you want to go grab one of those. Yeah, that's going to be a really great class. It sounds like a nice deep dive on a subject that, um, I don't know, I love to get help with. Um, like you said, six spots left and those are in uh, the shop now. And I believe it's open to non-members at this point, You're just adding the um, $10 add-on for non-members. All right, next slide. Business member spotlight. Uh, Marcin, do you want to do the business member spotlight? Well, um, Anne is here to do to do her little talk. If you'll uh, click on the Google Doc, and it'll run through that. But I'd like to introduce Anne Bain, who runs uh, Beach Girl Quilting. Take it away, Anne. Hi there. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, Thanks a lot for letting me talk about my passion, which it's so great when you're in a quilt guild and everybody's as crazy as you are about fabric and everything. Um, uh, let's see. I don't see my slides, so I'm assuming the first slide is up. No, I don't think we have it up yet. Do you have that? There we go. There we go. Okay. Um, oh, you're there. So um, probably like a lot of people, um, I have kids that are in their 30s and I remember dragging them around Joanne's in their stroller. So I've been doing this for a while, but probably about five years ago, I finally bought a long arm because I was tired of squishing queen size quilts through my juki. Um, and um, so I started, um, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. I started doing um, just uh, hand guided free motion kinds of stuff. Um, and this quilt right here, um, it, the pattern is first gift by lo and behold. And I challenged myself to do a different pattern in each of those, I think they're octagons. Um, and it actually ended up jurying into a uh, quilt expo, which like, really thrilled me because it was one of those things where you're like, I'm just going to put this in and it'll be a good experience. And then when they said that they'd accepted it, I was like, whoa. Um, okay, next slide. Um, and then this is just another example. This quilt is um, Judy Madsen quilted the original one and then, um, shoot, I can't think of the person that actually did the pattern. Um, her name might come to me. Anyway, um, I saw this one before I actually had my long arm and I just thought I really want to be able to do something like that. So um, that's just another example of my hand guided free motion. Next slide, please. And then this one, um, when I took my, my first class on my long arm, um, Actually, before I actually had my own, I was renting. But anyway, um, the teacher said most people end up being more kind of a circle person or a square person, like when they're doing their free motion. And I do like doing the kind of curvy, feathery, that kind of thing. But I also do like the geometric. So this one was fun because it, it was very like geometric, um, but I still wanted to put kind of a combination. Um, next slide. And then about a year and a half ago, I got a computer. I have a handy quilter Amara and I got a pro stitcher. And 
in my little brain, I was like, well, this will save me from having to stand in front of my machine forever and ever and ever. It's going to just be like, push the button and it will quilt. Oh, Lord, was I ever wrong. Um, for those people who have computers, you know, it's there's a lot of setup and there's a lot of what we call babysitting. It is kind of nice because it is a little bit faster, but it's definitely not push the button. So um, this is Krista Moser's, um, uh, I think it's Bumblebee Blossoms. And I love this because I love, um, you know, a lot of bright uh, colors like Juicy Juice, I love him. Um, and a lot of negative space, but those bees were a pain in the you know what. And by the time I was done, I was like, I, I'm ready to be done with this quilt. So I thought about custom quilting this, but I just wanted it done. So this is one of the ones that I did more of an edge to edge. Next slide. And then um, these are, uh, the long skinny one is uh, so kind of wonderful. And what I did with that one was I actually went and um, kind of blocked out the leaves. I did like, a, I, I would like define a square and I would crop out each leaf and I would, so the, the feathery stuff, that's actually from my computer, but I had to like do it block by block by block. And then I did free motion on the leaves. So it was kind of fun because I always like to challenge myself. And then I, in the middle of it, I'm like, why did I do that to myself? Why? Um, the other one is a fig tree quilt um, that I just did free motion on, or I'm sorry, I did edge to edge. Next slide. So this is just some stuff about me. Um, I have been quilting for other people for about a year and a half. I live in Salem um, and I'm also um, involved in the Quilt of Valor through Brownsville. So um, I really get a lot out of doing Quilt of Valor because I've seen the, um, the veterans when you give them a quilt it's like such a huge big deal to them. They like, some of them get cheery eyed and like, it's a quilt. <laughs> I would have been doing this anyway. Um, but anyway, it, it's very cool. Um, I live in West Salem, but um, if I can ever help anybody, don't let that be a problem because my daughter lives in Tualatin and I'm probably in Portland, probably at least three times a month. So, um, I have a website, uh, it's beachgirlquilting.com. If you want any more information or if I can ever help you. I really, go ahead and go to the next slide. I really appreciate you guys letting me uh, talk about my uh, long arm business. And um, for the next month, I'm gonna do 20% off the quilting for anybody that's in uh, the, Portland Modern Quilt Guild. So there's contact information there for you. So thank you so much. Thank you, Anne. That was wonderful. It's nice to see all the work that you've done. And I'm looking forward to using that 20% off on my next quilt. <laughs> <laughs> well, just give me a holler. I will. I will. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Hey, while you're here, Anne, I have a question. Um, you do Quilts of Valor. I heard um, that the CCQ show coming up is, has a Quilts of Valor um, special uh, exhibit. How, do you have quilts showing in that one? Um, no, I'm I'm through Brownsville, and I don't think I heard anything. Um, I actually did. I hung some quilts in like the Lynn County Fair because they were having a Quilts of Valor thing there. But um, is, is this something through Portland or? No, the Clark County Quilters, their quilt show, I think it's in October. Oh. And um, they were saying that um, somebody was talking to me and they said that they have a Quilts of Valor special exhibit. So oh, sorry, okay, well, maybe I'll contact them. Yeah, yeah. I really, I really, really, it, I don't know. I was so impressed how, how like for Klimt these guys get, I mean, these are people that got shot at and everything and they're like getting cheery eyed because we're giving them quilts. So yeah, I get it. I'm a veteran too. And I, I, 
I volunteer yeah. for veterans organizations and they, yeah. they love it. So, anyway. All right, thanks for doing that. Um, also, I want to uh, give a shout out and mention that we are looking for a volunteer to lead the business membership program next year. So um, I don't know if you like volunteering, maybe volunteer for that. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, not you. I was, I wanted everybody. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. I'm like, I just joined. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, sorry, I don't know what I'm doing. Hey, Chris, I, I think I pinned myself. Sorry. Okay. Um, will you show the next slide? Am I doing it right? Okay, next slide. Um, here is the MQG update. QuiltCon registration is open now. Uh, QuiltCon re registration opened up like, uh, what, yesterday, the day before. Um, submissions for QuiltCon 23. Three will be open September 1st. Erin um, Case, who has had her quilts in the QuiltCon before, she highly recommends getting them in uh, closer to the opening than the deadline. Um, so that's a hot tip we got from Erin Case the other day. Uh, quilt math, uh, yardage. Um, this is a free pattern for MQG members. They have a bunch of free patterns up on their website now. The MQG also has a fresh look to their website. So if you haven't been on their website lately, I recommend checking it out. Um, they have all of their resources and things up there. So pretty cool. And also um, QuiltCon magazine uh, submissions are open now in September. I think it closes the end of September. So something to look at if you have patterns or articles you want to submit. Um, I think they're looking for submissions. All right, next slide. PMQG Charity and Beyond. Look at these quilts. Nadia, Deborah, you always want to talk about this? Hi, can you hear me? It's Nadia. Yes, I can hear you. I'm going to mute. You awesome. go ahead. Wonderful. Okay, yeah, so a bit of an update from our group. So PMQ Charity Beyond Portland. Uh, a group of us have finished three quilts and we are all not located in Portland and folks have done a lot of great sewing for blocks and people have put together these fabulous three quilts and long armed them. Two are still waiting for binding. They were just finished um, yesterday. And uh, as Giuseppe was talking about uh, photographing quilts, I was thinking about these pictures that I had my husband hold my quilt up with and I'm not <laughs> sure if I succeeded, but anyways, I will take those notes for our next um. <laughs> our next photo shoot. So I'd just like to give a great shout out to Deborah Thompson. She is our fearless leader for this group and is doing a great job in communication, as well as the rest of the volunteers. And they are Maureen, Arita, Lily, Sue, Liz, Michelle, Jeannie, and Cynthia. And they've made these beautiful blocks for these three quilts that will be um, donated to uh, different locations outside of Portland, but on behalf of the Portland Modern Quilt Guild. And those organizations are still yet to be decided at this point. And our block making volunteers are working on our second uh, set of blocks for three new quilts that hopefully we'll be showing you in a few months. Thanks, everyone. Next slide, please. That was a great. And this is for Renee. Renee, for the Whip Circle update, if Renee is on. I am. Um, good evening. I. Um, um, as the year, as the year draws to the end, um, it's time to remind you to send in your photos of your completed whips. Um, it only takes one raffle ticket to win and you will, can be crowned the world-class whips winner. Uh, you can go to our, uh, members only page to sign up and still, you can still have a chance to win half of the pot. The other half goes to our charity quilt um, organization. Thank you for um, the time. Thanks so much, Renee. Um, the half half of the um, uh, whoop circle goes to the scholarship fund. So we're excited for that. Um, so next slide, Nadia, unmute, you're back. Put that sewing down. I saw <laughs> you over there trying to get some stitching in. <laughs> yes, I almost had a, a show and tell today, but not quite. Oh, um, so, so close. <laughs> so close. Next month. Mm. So block of the month. So I had great um, uh, 
I, I had great intention of, of helping with block of the month. And I came up with an idea with the help of Sarah. And I am a science nerd at heart. Uh, I work for an agriculture uh, research center up here in Canada. And this block uh, was called stomata. So stomata are part of a plant cell. And there's a great write up about what stomata are in the um, block um, instructions. And Sarah and Jenny did such a great job and writing up on how to put this block together. And it was just my idea of like, oh my gosh, circles, this whole inspiration. I'm a science geek. I'd love to throw my idea out there, but Sarah and Jenny are the stars of this month's um, block of the month. So I hope folks have a great time putting it together and um, I'm excited to see what people make. Yeah, it's a cool block. We've seen a couple makes already on uh, the hashtag. Um, oh, I forgot what it is. It's been a long day, but I love it. I love a macro um, close up of the stomata. That is such a cool idea and it really flows well. It's a big uh, curve because these are big blocks. So they're pretty uh, accessible. Oh, thank you. PMQG. Yeah. I know genie putters up. They look really great. And um, I also had um, good intentions. I cut out a whole quilt of stomata and then it's in a basket. <laughs> over there. All right. So um, only one more month for block of the month. And next month is the last month and it's Chris Marchini next month. So um, if you're behind it all, don't worry about it. Just catch up, maybe do a couple of these, a couple of those. Um, so yeah, that's our block of the month. Those are in the members only section for download. Okay. Next slide. What do we got? Oh, rainbow mini quilt challenge award winners. Casey, are you here? Did you want to talk about this? Is Casey here? I don't remember if Casey's here or not. I don't know, haven't seen her. Okay, but these are the people's choice winners. We had the vote up for a long time. I feel like it was two months or so. Um, Us by Casey Manley, and she's totally embarrassed that she won. She didn't want to win because she was helping leading it, but she made a really cool mini quilt. And then All Together Now by Joe Walschlager. Um, I loved her piece. I almost bought it. It was really, really cool. And Broke Back by Beth Wells. Those were our top three people's choice winners. Uh, the People's Choice winner at Gallery GoGo -Go is The Sun Takes Off Her Coat by Jeannie Algombi. Um, they had an extra show at uh, the Gallery GoGo -Go and um, they wanted to give away something extra. So um, we're sending her a prize as well. And the participation winner, which is everybody by random drawing out of the number generator of all the participants that weren't already selected was Say Gay by Erica Barcourt. And I have pictures of these on the next slide. Can you go to the next slide, Chris? There they are. There they are. Can you see that one by Joe? It's, it's very cool. They're all really cool. Um, I'm just really excited about the Rainbow Mini Show. It went really well and we had a great time. If you have any questions about it, it's um, we have a page on our website about the Rainbow Mini Show. We have booked Powell's Books for 2023 for the whole month of June. So we will be bringing it back for next year year we're starting a little bit earlier in November so that people have a little bit more time to make minis um, we have three spots for like a larger lap size quilt and we're also encouraging people to work in teams and groups so we're going to have sign up going for that in November um, we don't have a fabric sponsor for it yet so we're not sure about fabric stuff but we're still sorting out we've set some requests out where I have it Marcy has she's working really hard on it um, so um there's that. If you have any ideas for people to ask for a fabric, that'd be cool too. Um, so that's it. Next slide. Show and tell. I think Nadia usually does this. Nadia, did you want to do it? You're so good sure. at it. Okay. Sure. I'll do it. Great. Okay. I'm, I'm going to mute. Next slide, please. Okay. Jeannie, you are up. Wow. Look at these stripes. Uh yeah, so I'm in that group with Jenny um, about the pattern designing, and uh, we were talking about a couple of artists, and this is an inspiration from uh, Saul Lewitt, um, who did a, a huge series of wall murals, um, and so this is an inspiration from that. Wow, it is stunning. So visually appealing. Thanks. I'm going to have to Google Saul Lewitt. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And I think like it was called like wall mural number 370 in one of the wonderful. Gallery. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. Thank you for sharing. Oh, sure. Yeah. No, thank you. Our prompt for next month is Sister Karita Kent, if you want to look at some inspirational stuff. Ooh. Okay, for that uh, modern pattern design. Interesting. Wonderful. Okay, next slide, please. 
Jeannie again. Yeah, me again. So, awesome. Yeah, this one I was pretty excited. I submitted uh, to a pretty big uh, show back in Oklahoma. And I not only got into the show, but I won first place emerging artist with the show. And um, it's a, a big Cherokee show. And it's based on one of my favorite traditional stories of the spider that brings fire to the people. So oh my, my goodness, my first big win. So it's pretty cool. Congratulations. That's fantastic. That is awesome. Way to go. What an interesting piece. Okay, Carol Subert, you are up. Are you are you online, Carol? Oh, I don't see her here. Okay. I don't see her in, in the attendance list. Okay, so Carol, uh, she created this to meet a personal challenge to stitch a quilt for each of her four siblings this year using their favorite colors. The first for the older sister affectionately known as Dear Sweet Horton. Wow, those are such interesting fabrics. I'd love to ask if those are vintage or if they're shirts. Really nice. Look at all those points. I would never get all of those points so perfect. Great job, Carol. I love the scrappy binding. Yeah. Okay, and Sarah, you're next and oh, I hear you, so me. you're up. This is my huge piece. I did a six month long exploration course with Maria Shell and a group of like 25 other amazing, talented quilt artists. And um, it was helpful to define like what I like to do as a quilter. And I like to make large blocks, um, bold graphic uh, statements. Um, I love eyeballs and I like quilts that say something. So um, this was my finale piece. I made several others in the series, but this was the last one and the best one. So I just, I love it. I'm so happy with it. Um, she taught me, you know, just to accept my scrappy wonky weirdness. And she said that it's just a treat for the viewer to find the things that are switched around long. It's like an Easter egg. You're welcome. You found one that was switched around backwards and I'm not seeing ripping it. So this <laughs> is my quote. I'm called, I called it, I see what you're saying. Um, that's what my husband said when he looked at it. He's like, oh, it's like, I see what you're saying. I'm like, I love that. So that's what I'm going with. And I'm really happy with it. I haven't quilted it yet, but um, you know, we show tops here. So I'm pretty happy with it. Thanks. That's awesome. I think those uh, eyeballs and, and mouths are part of your branding. I'm just saying, and maybe yeah, that's straight. More, like more, <laughs> I tried so hard to get an eyeball block forever. Like, and it's not coming out great. And I finally, I feel like, I feel like I crushed it with so this great. one. <laughs> Wonderful. That Great job, Sarah. Thank you so much. What a Thank great you. experience with Maria Shell. Amy Dame. You are up. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I submitted these a while ago, so I'm like, wait, where all this met? Um, so this is a um, quilt for my cousin who had a baby. Um, I had been playing around with the idea. And then when my cousin had a baby, it was the perfect timing because um, he and his wife are super into mountain climbing. They like climb Mount Kilimanjaro and stuff like that. And they live um, near Banff in Canada and are on the mountain all the time. So it was a fun, simple baby quilt that I think was like 10 or 15 hours, maybe I forget now, but it was quick enough that it wasn't like overwhelming um, and it was fun to do. So yeah, Wonderful. it's paper pieced. The, um, the upper part is paper pieced. And then basically I used the bigger portions like just as templates. Um, and I had it printed at a print shop so that I had it the whole size that it's needed. And I think I want to make this again because I think it's a fun one for baby quilts. I don't know what, yep. what, which photography rules I followed according to Jen. Ooh, I see or, the horizon. I see Anne, it. I, but it's level. I guess it's straight. <laughs> it is level and it's sun actually. It was yep. funny because I thought about asking a question, but I was dealing with cats um because I'm cat sitting <laughs> so I didn't where I was like I always have so many problems with shadows whenever I try to use natural light um and so there's this one spot in my building that gets like if I sneak into the little courtyard I'm not supposed to go into and tape it to the side of the building when no one's looking and I stand far enough away that my shadow isn't in it mm -hmm. it's like a whole system I've got set up <laughs> um so yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
So I saved Wonderful. the templates, the paper templates. And so now I just need to reprint the cloud each time. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be fun and easy. And it's a, it'll be a fun way to like use up prints. Like mm -hmm. I thought about mm -hmm. doing ones that was like all like foresty or something would be cute too. Wonderful. So, is the cloud uh, applicator? Is that uh, paper piece? It's, piece as it's well? all paper piece. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Very, very cool. I was thinking it was Squamish at first, but Banff, I see. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just, it could be any mountains, really. It could be. <laughs> for sure. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for sharing. Wonderful. Thank you. Next slide, there's please. more. <laughs> yeah. Amy again. Yeah. This is, um, I have a quilt. I did a quilt, um, oh, years ago now, that's a little four inch hoop that's a vibrator. It was part of a series of, of little mini sex toys. And then I did a larger quilt for an art show I did a couple years ago that was um, called In Pleasure and Pain, Doing It For Ourselves. That was kind of a statement on women and assigned female at birth people, healthcare and sexuality. Um, and so a friend of mine on like 11 o'clock on a Friday night was like, I really, really want a patch for my jean jacket for this conference that I'm going to. Um, and she owns a really awesome store called Self Serve in Albuquerque. So she's going to a con convention for work and she was like, I want something really cool. Um, and she was meeting with the Hitachi people, the magic wand people. So she was really excited. So it was about 10 hours of work. I um, starting Friday at 11 and she was picked it up around 4 a.m. on Sunday on her way to Las Vegas. <laughs> so um, nice. So what really we do fun. for friends. <laughs> yeah, it was, and That's then I awesome. we did a trade. So it was great. <laughs> awesome. Good job. Very unique. Wonderful. And again, Amy. Yeah, I put there's a bunch in here. I'm sorry, everybody. These are <laughs> my um, the Rainbow Challenge one. They're paper piece lipsticks. Um, I used invisible thread that everyone has been bashing for all these years. And I recently discovered it in the last year or two. And I'm like, this shit's amazing, y'all. Like, it's so great to not have to switch threads constantly because mm -hmm. I am the person that will switch threads constantly. So <laughs> um, just really super pop arty and for fun. Yeah. I love it. That is so cool. So awesome. I would love to own all of those colors of lipstick. I probably nice. wouldn't wear any of them, but I would just look I at them. I thought about not wonderful. doing the other colors. So I'm like, I wouldn't wear orange or yellow, but I'm like, no, other people will. <laughs> Beautiful. It's it's so great. Awesome. Yeah. Next slide, please. And Amy. This is my other one. Um, it's cut off in the middle. So it's pictured as a full square. Um, mm -hmm. So this is a progress pride flag and I made it to fit a square, but I also... Um, a huge part of um, a social justice to me is that when we center the most marginalized people, it benefits all of us. So whether that's like, if we center people who are disabled, that also benefits people who use a stroller, you know, for instance, or something. Um, so it seemed really fitting to do it this way um, for this quilt because by centering black and brown queers and trans and gender variant queers, it benefits us all. And then the back side, there's just a clip there of the quilting on the back because I loved how it turned out. Mm -hmm. And um, I almost want to do like a whole cloth just with that. So mm -hmm. I used the 10 inch wedge ruler and then it's an inset circle. So thank you. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. What a statement. And yes, such a true um, truth to that. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. Next slide, please. Marika. You still here, Marika? Maybe Marika went to bed. I know she's got a littles. Yeah, I don't see Marika on anymore. Okay, so I believe this was, um, I read a little bit about this, I believe, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, that she maybe won some of these blocks or was given the fabric. And I think this is now a donation towards the Portland uh, Charity Quilt Project, the local one. It's I so fun right. and poppy and the dots are great. Sorry, was someone else going to chime in there? No, I was going to say, I think you're right. She said it was going to go to the charity program. Mm -hmm. Yes. Gorgeous quilt, Marika. I'm sure you're dealing with your little person. Okay, Deborah. 
Hi. Well, I have the um, pleasure of taking Sheila Frampton Cooper's class, and this is what I came up with. So um, it was my first time, obviously, doing anything like this, and it was challenging, but I had so much fun. So this is it. And I did name it Dot after my mom. So here it is. <laughs> that is so lovely. I took that class with you and boy, was it interesting and amazing. And uh, yeah, there were a few star pupils who did all of the homework and who did all of the exercises. And I believe you're one of them. I was a <laughs> delinquent and uh, yeah, it turned out great. So great to see folks using what they've learned in PMQG uh, classes. Thank you so much for sharing. You're welcome. Gorgeous. Thanks. Next slide, please. Marcy. <laughs> okay. Well, you can see I'm not straight and I put my husband in it so that, you know, I, what I shouldn't have done. Branding, branding, <laughs> branding. But um, at the beginning of pandemic, I just went through my scrap bins and cut up a bunch of three inch uh, squares. And uh, I love this granny square kind of pattern that I found several years ago and I think this is the second one I've made so I hope to get it quilted in the next couple of weeks and now I'm going to work on my uh, photographing of it but my husband whenever I hold it he always does that he always tries to put his head in it so I guess that's my branding I love it that's, that's <laughs> so funny it's so awesome I'll see if I can get my partner to do that too <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to steal your brand though <laughs> Go oh, ahead. that was number 10. That was number 10. <laughs> Thank you, Marcy. Anne, Anne Jenkins. Hello. I literally just finished this in like an hour <laughs> today. Uh, my cousin had a baby last week. And of course, my mom's like, hey, why don't you make her a quilt? I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> so I dug through my stash. I think I won this stack of five inch squares or something like that. Um, yeah, they're toothbrushes, boom boxes, mm -hmm. little cats and glasses of milk and bananas. And uh, it just looks really fun and um, kind of high contrast, uh, fun for a baby. So, yeah. Love it. I think that's Rashida Coleman Hale's line. I think, yeah, I, think I think I so. have a lot of that in my, <laughs> my, my sewing room. Cool. <laughs> Great job. Great job for finishing that off tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Wonderful. Thanks everyone for show and tell. All right. Here we are at the raffle. Let's raffle see. We, time. Have, I'm we have 92 people here. Oh. So I'm going to do the random number generator. I have it at 92. Number 21. All right. One sec. Let me count. 21. I'm so happy that you save these for this this raffle month. It's like I just remember going through the beginning of the year. You're like, wait, I have to save these till August. Yes. yes. <laughs> Number 21 is Chris. I believe it's Chris Batten. Oh, Chris Batten. Is that you, Chris Batten? Yay. That Congratulations. is Congratulations. Right? Perfect. Yes. Okay. Good. I will get that to you. Congratulations, Chris. Thanks so much for doing your raffle this month, Marcy. I really appreciate it. I love giving things away. Oh, you're crushing it. <laughs> oh, this is you too. Do you want to welcome the new people? Um, well, I think Heidi was the only one here. Um, and Cal and Elaine, thank you for joining half year. We're, we're looking forward to seeing you at some of our events. Hopefully, maybe if you're interested, you can uh, join our board. We're a lot of fun people. Super fun. I, I do see <laughs> Elaine on. Um, There's I Elaine, don't okay. see, yeah, I don't see anyone under the name of Cal, but they could always have a different username yeah. in their Zoom. Welcome, and, everybody. And Heidi was here earlier. I saw her too. Yep. So welcome, everybody. Nice. All right, next slide. Okay, we have a classified ad. We still have classified ads. It's $5 for a classified ad, and that money goes to the scholarship fund. If you ever want a classified ad, um, we put it up on our classified ad webpage on the website, and we do a shout out at our guild meeting, and um, we can do other things too. Um, so save the date, Saturday, August 27 at Pioneer Quilts. They have a big yard sale coming up, 24 different vendors, all kinds of fabric and stashes and fabric arts to long arm quilters. And of course, the shop will be open for a 
business and they have tons of things going on sale. I think there's food and ice cream and things like this too. Um, have you never been to Pioneer Quilts? Go. It's got a gorgeous grounds area. Like that's beautiful. Um, Chris Batten, if you're here, you go there all the time. It's just a beautiful place to hang out and be. Um, yeah, Chris can, yeah, I know that they go to it, it's a nice sale. It's a fun sale. So um, anyways, sorry, I'm gushing. It's cool. They gave us five bucks for a scholarship fund. So we do a, a shout out and um, it's August 27th. It's going to be a beautiful day. All right, next slide. Okay, so I was going to go over upcoming happenings again. Um, just to remind people, uh, we are calling for 2023 board member volunteers. It's the sign up sheet is open now. Um, most of the positions have at least one person volunteering for them. Um, I think we don't have anybody volunteering yet for social media VP uh, technology and marketing. Um, Chris, did you want to chat about that position or no? Yeah, so anyone who is interested in, um, you know, taking on that position, you know, I'll be here to, to help you with it. But I, I just want to say I've learned a lot from being the VP this year learning about the social media and running the website. So if you have any want maybe to build your own brand, this might be a good way to kind of dip your toes with some of the resources the Guild has to see what's out there before investing in it yourself. So it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, I really like what you've done with the website. And um, I think it's been a fun year learning Canva and creating marketing images too. Yes. So that's been really great. Um, so if you're interested in learning uh, branding, marketing, uh, the website and things, um, think about volunteering for that. Of course, anybody can volunteer for any position at all. Um, if you have any questions about uh, volunteering for the board, just send us an email or reach out to the current board member position that you're thinking about like Chris or uh, Nadia who's secretary you think about secretary um, so just want to put that out there um, yeah so QuiltCon community quilt kits are available now there's a sign up sheet uh, in the members only page Casey Manley has those and she pulled those uh, fabrics from the free table so we're doing um, an environmentally friendly um, uh, community quilts uh, that we were not we didn't buy any of the fabric we're pulling it from the free table so that's pretty great uh, West Side Sew Day with Carol Subert um, it's going to be awesome uh, most people have gone maybe pre-pandemic but um, it's if you don't know it's on the west side because it's going to be the west side of um, Mill End Fabric Store it's right next to Wajamaya so a lot of people like to go over to Wajamaya walk across the parking lot and get some food there it's really fun um, there's other places to eat too um, it's going to be a really fun day check the calendar if there's one in September and there's one in November as well and um, that will probably be our our only sew days for the rest of the year so if you miss them you miss some um, indigo dye workshop with Marcy McFarlane. Uh, that's offering being offered by the surface design small groups. It's going to be a fun day. There's a huge workshop. There's a big roll up doors. It's going to be open air, um, fun indigo dyeing. If you've never done it, think about it. More information on that coming soon. Uh, the fall retreat camp to look um, September 15th to the 18th. Um, again, if you are going and you missed the meeting last night, we have the recording posted in the members only section. If you have any questions at all, don't worry. Just um, send a message to the uh, Guild inbox and we'll make sure it gets sent to um, Angie Reed and Jenny McKee, the, um, the leaders for that. Um, they are volunteers. <laughs> so uh, we're all doing our best to make it happen. And um, this is our first in-person retreat since uh, the pandemic closed down everything. Uh, the library, we talked about that earlier, um, potentially is closing unless we get a volunteer. We're not rushing to let go of those assets at all. We're still uh, working that out. Um, so we'll probably get a full write-up on the help wanted section in the members only uh, sec section of our website saying what that entails, what that job entails. If anybody's listening and you're interested in uh, volunteering to be the librarian, uh, maybe send a message to the guild and we'll link you up with Angel Van Note, who can go over it with you. Um, let's see, Charity Sew Day is taking a month off. Um, no big deal. They just uh, have some of their classes that got scheduled on that day. So um, no Charity Sew Day with Kath Hall. I know, it's so fun. Um, so no Charity Sewing with Kath Hall in the month of August. And um, I think that's about it. Um, turn your screen on. Stay a minute. 
chat. Anybody have any questions about anything? Penny, are you still here from the UK? Is Penny still here? 